whatever it can do, expose that in the GUI. That's fine. Well, I mean, this is like the whole thing, man. I mean, this is how you, we got to make Windows users feel at home. We got to have blinky, wishy, unnecessary system hogging resource UI Shut shit. Shut up, NVIDIA drivers for Windows. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin. That's a horse next to Jordan. <laughs> It doesn't make sense in the video version. Audio <laughs> listeners, don't don't waste your bandwidth. And down there, Pedro Mateus. Ignore them. Ignore them. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Listen, man, just because you're the only person to fight a quiche and win doesn't mean you get to hold a horse the entire episode. Yes, it does, damn it. No, it's we've been so over in this. my contract. We've been over this, and I believe Shut Realm Dynamic will back us up, watching this live, helping here us for him. <laughs> Cocaine Voltron. What's new, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? It is yet another week, and... A fascinating one for those of you who happen to run Linux and play video games. Yeah, says I scroll all the way to the top of our show notes. It's a very exciting <laughs> Friday, at least. I've been busy. I've been busy. I, I've been trying to spread joy and love and community throughout. Um, and frustration and repetition. <laughs> well, I was going to say, none of that's really true. What I'm up to is I'm reigniting like crippling track mania addictions Informing new ones because LGC cares. Hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> You've been doing very, very well, apparently. People have been enjoying that very, very much. <laughs> if you're unfamiliar, we have the uh, Get Good Geriatrics series starting up. Well, it's going up to, I think we're on week three right now, where I'm loading up new maps on Tuesdays. We do time trials from Tuesdays, just whenever on our little private server until Fridays when I'm like, all right. Let's test this out. Tuesdays is fun because you can vote on maps and we can figure out, we can prune that down. Then we have a friendly competition, which is legitimately fun. And uh, everyone started to show up last night and that was fantastic. That was a blast. We had some winners. Uh, who won? I got to get a better system. Um, <laughs> uh, the, then the post-it note? <laughs> Dude. I, I guess the head writing's caught up to you finally. <laughs> Does that no, no, show no. up? No, it, I, here, here, here's my question. Have you, did you just run out of space or are you at the point where you just can't read what you wrote? Down? Oh, well, we've run out of space. Now we're optimizing the previously uh, un, uncared for space. Like, oh, I couldn't write anything there. Like, yes, we can. So, yeah, uh-huh. Daisy, Foxy, and Rowhead um, are going to win some games. Uh, just, nice. I, I told them last night, send me, send me a message on the Steams and I'll uh, send Linux game pass. Key. Very yeah, nice. <laughs> good times. Come hang out with us Tuesday. I got... Most of the maps picked out for Tuesday. We can play around, set some base times, and hammer on it the rest of the week. I mean, it's Trek Mania. We got a Linux server. It runs over Proton. It's cheap. It runs on a calculator, and it's all about showing up, talking smack, encouraging each other. It was kind of fun. A lot of people uh, have some misconceptions about our community, and when they show up, I'm like, "No, man, we just all get along, and have fun. We're here, we're here to, you know." That that's kind of what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of the point, man. That's kind of the <laughs> point. I, 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 unlike certain super tux cart players. <laughs> uh, that's all he ever does. I do, I do want to bring this up uh, just to be done with that. Uh, I want to make this point because um, we're casual track mania players. I, I want to put the emphasis on this. So if you're looking to like show up and do victory laps, like yo nerds, that just reminded me. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, like certain like super tuck card players that are like, oh, that's all I do. Look, I'm so much faster than all of you. Oh, noobs. You're not going to have a good time. Neither are we. So keep that in mind. Jordan, did you just like get a thing to put on the horse inside the horse? Well, so uh, I, I was I was trying to put my, my, my wizard hood on top of it because I was seeing if that fit. It does not, by the way. Uh-huh. Uh, pro, pro tip. <laughs> I, I, I was I was thinking like maybe, maybe I'll set it up as like like a robe hanger or something in the background. I don't know. Um, yeah, no, it's been a very very busy week for me. I go into a little bit more detail in the pre pre super shows and, uh, but un- completely unrelated to that, it's weird being it's weird having like progressed in the gym to the point where like stuff you dreamed of one rep maxing, you're just like repping. It's it's bizarre. Like I don't I don't know. A hundred kilograms seems so inter- insurmountable, and now it's just my daily working set. And yeah, you're gonna be the best drug mule. I am. I'm gonna have so much <laughs> space in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
why Man, that's why I do all those kilograms squats, that's slightly heavier than me. <laughs> so what I mean, have you just abandoned the idea of like setting up all the mask over the mantle? Uh, no, I, I need to, I, I need to actually like sit down and no, I don't, I need to buy like wooden angle platforms so I can like actually mount them properly. So you can see the heads. Yeah. Yeah. I just need to do that. And I've been far too lazy. All right. Fair enough. Too busy. Um, shoveling snow. Too busy shoveling. She's something. Pedro, what about you? <laughs> yeah, no, but work is, uh, taking a lot of my time and it's going to be taking a lot more over the next uh, month or so because there's a um, big refresh coming on so that that that's going to be Ooh, Windows 11 we need to send out Windows 11 they're thinking about upgrading too. to ME <laughs> <laughs> now uh, thankfully at least the side of the NHS that I work for uh, has been progressing fairly quickly with the Windows versions. Uh, so, yes, Windows 11 is one of the big ones that's coming up. And older laptops that are no longer supported because we do have to meet the uh, evergreen IT requirements. Let's take them out back and so, shoot Just stick them all I, on Arch. <laughs> my God. <laughs> Always great. Yeah, the problem is... Uh, people working from home, so you're going to be hurting cats to get some of those laptops back. <laughs> I, I, that's, you got to show up their house with like a like a billy club, <laughs> boring company flamethrower. Or something. One of the things I'm thinking with that is like I, I bet you could melt some snow with some laptops. <laughs> yes, I mean you might be able to do it <laughs> once, but I, I, I mean, I mean to, so, some of those big chunky Toshiba XPS, laptops, you'll yeah. melt through all the snow. <laughs> I mean, they are Intel, so they're going to be warm. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Unlike the horse, which is only at room temperature at best. I mean, you have to let your horse chill for, what, five to ten years before you can properly eat it for, so that it can get the proper level of gelatinousness? <laughs> it's the steam Analytics. Update of the week. So, tell, tell me about your deck. My deck is so compatible, you guys. <laughs> um, do you want me to tell you about all the things my deck is compatible with? Please. I'm at the edge of my seat here. Come on. <laughs> Perverts. No, what we are talking about is Steam Deck's compatibility reviews have started rolling out. And what's featured there, that's a really bad screenshot. Um, that, which is not a screenshot. I, I give that, look. You know what? At first glance, at first glance, rock, paper, shotgun, that looks convincible. But it's Herlock Sholmes. No, I don't know, man. That's mm -hmm. probably immediately two clicks <laughs> away from some nakedness, but that's fine if that's what you're into. Uh, check this out. 67 games have so far received a rating for whether or not they're going to work on DAX, which is good news. Platformers, as you might have guessed, easy win. It's going to run out of the box on the deck. Now, the only thing in here... With the, uh, and if you're unfamiliar, Valve is going to, there's a verification system, like good, bad, don't bother with the Steam Deck, you know, verified, playable, and unsupported. And the one that kind of caught me out of left field was Arizona Sunshine, mainly because it's a lovely <laughs> name, too beautiful for the deck. No, the real reason is it's a VR game. And I guess yeah. they decided to plug in the uh, face toaster to the Steam Deck with that just because reasons, yeah, but like, Fuck it, why not? I mean, I mean, maybe it's like a VR optional game. I don't know. No, it's but, not. <laughs> no, then fuck. Then then I don't. I don't know. Maybe they they just they were just curious. They wanted to make sure that they're rejecting VR games. But yeah, if you want to play Job Simulator, Simulator or Sexy Team Teen Pokemon Demon Battle Four or Persona or Golden, as it's more colloquially known, uh yeah, you're shit out of luck. Uh, and of course, this isn't the exhaustive list of everything. No. Um, this is just, this is all the devs who have like self-reported already. So, <laughs> and I mean, out of the 67 and games, that list uh, is slightly wrong. <laughs> okay. Pedro, oh, feel free to fact correct. Check. <laughs> yeah. Fact check Mateus. Because, because, uh, there's nothing risk in the show of notes. rain. A risk. Yes. Uh, I didn't write anything because I had <laughs> seen psychic. that list so many times. <laughs> But yeah, the uh, Risk of Rain, it's Risk of Rain 2. That was actually the verified one because the first one, I guarantee you that shit would get the unsupported tag immediately. <laughs> or do we need to go find out why or? 
uh, yes. because the text scaling is crap. Uh, the um, It would basically be impossible to see the character on a screen that small. Because the first risk of rain, it's like the teeny tiny, like nine pixel Whoa, tall character. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on. We get, <laughs> if, if we're gonna if we're gonna check veracity of this, we got to see the playability report for Serpent in the Sad Stagland. Because that <laughs> that gets the record for tiniest fucking like game window in the history of game windows. And we're talking about a window that is so I mean so small it's comical. It is like you want to like mm-hmm. hey come in here and look at this. Um, can, can, can you read what this says? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have better eyesight than me then. <laughs> now, one thing that did kind of catch me off is like, oh, poor one out for homies, uh, Tomb Raider. And Rise of the Tomb Raiders on there too. Because like, that's how you're going to be playing them. Even though, even though both of them have native ports. They have launchers though. And that's what's going to kick them off the, down, down the pipe. Right. And Iden Farrell is not going to get paid by... Idos and WB and whoever else to go back yeah. and fix that up when they're like, does it run into room? I wonder. Yeah, that, that that's kind of it. Like, yeah. unless it's a total and Warhammer they have- game, they don't give a shit at this point. <laughs> And they have the big uh, no, no. Oh, you're using an unsupported distro, so this is not going to work. Or your drivers aren't the the ones we yeah, tested with, I, so this is not going to work. It's like, yeah, no, the scare screens. That's I've got to go. See, the only thing, <laughs> well, like, that's the just only the issue barrel I, launcher in general. Well, hundred percent. Right? Like but yeah. I mean, that was our one gum, and it's like that is a fantastic idea. Only as long as you keep it updated. Mm-hmm. And it's Which, not updated anymore. <laughs> Nope. Nope. <laughs> well, uh, speak, speaking of game updates, we're not we're not at that part of the show yet. But if you are a developer, uh, lo and behold, uh, adding uh, Proton support to easy anti-cheat for your game has never been easier. Uh, so we got this post from uh, store.steampower.com. All the links to all this stuff in our show notes. But verbatim, happy to announce that adding Steam Deck supports to your existing EAC games is now a simple process and does not require updating game binaries, SDK versions or integrations of Epic online services. So if you actually click on the link and follow it to their uh, developer documentation, what they're saying is uh, at the easy anti-cheat website, you have to log in for your game. uh, If you're the developer, tick the Linux support button, download the easy cheat dot so that corresponds to your specific easy anti-cheat version and drop it in your game directory right next to the a corresponding easy anti-cheat DLL. Um, you don't have to provide a new update. You just need to update the one file in the manifest, push it out, and you're good to go. And uh, so uh, if you're on BattleEye, though, you're going to need to get on a call with someone. You're going to need to contact Valve, or you're going to need to contact BattleEye to get that turned on, but that's all server-side. January 24th, Monday, this coming Monday, dun, dun, is when dun, Valve... Dun, dun, dun. That's when Valve is going to start emailing devs and be like, yo, here's your initial compatibility report with uh, anti-cheat, and this is going to affect your deck verified status. So you have a week to enable the shit or stick with it being listed as incompatible. But... And I kind of wish they wouldn't do this, but I understand why they're doing it. Um, There is going to be an expedited review process if you are a developer who does not turn this on now, but later decides they do want to turn it on. I kind of feel it's like you had your chance, motherfucker. Now you got to wait in line. But, (laughs) you you know, you have to maintain. There's a lot of money to be made from microtransactions. There is 100% on this, man, because, you know, you got to give it to Valve. Valve has very, very politely said, hey, you know, Summer, get your shit together. This is what they're saying here, hundred percent. Now, um, they're also letting everyone know just how easy this is to set up because we've talked about maybe a week before last the kerfuffle with um, what game? Vermintide. Vermintide, Vermintide two came out. Go back and listen to that episode. I'm like, no, 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 no. There's uh, you see, um, EAC's got layers, and we have an old layer, and all this, and, and uh, I was like, nah, son. This is what Val was really saying. They they are publicly. <laughs> informing the public along with the developers fuck off with that nonsense. <laughs> quit making shit up right no, <laughs> without now, saying now, it directly go ahead now uh look uh uh what uh, one, one thing i was bringing up in the uh in, before we started recording is you know theoretically uh because you just need to add the the so to the game directory if you are a random person who happens to have access to the shared object files for a specific version of Easy Andy Cheat, you can drop that in your directory and see if they clicked a button or not. Just, just not. <laughs> see if they ticked the box but didn't actually bother to that put the yep. SO in the folder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, would, that would be an interesting experiment. Above and saying. beyond Valve is trying to help companies 
make money, which in turn will make Valve money. But holy hell, they brought you the paper. They're not going to wipe your ass. So yeah, you, you got to take care of this. 140 games use EAC according to the EAC web zone and about six of them are worth playing. So like, yeah, there's a lot of shit MMOs that use um, EAC. But there are also quite a few games, and some of them are MMOs that I've been wanting to play, and um, it's usually like the first release of a multiplayer game when there's a whole lot of people interested, like the um, horror uh, asymmetric multiplayer game that Friday the 13th, that mm-hmm. they said they would be uh, uh, supporting Dead, Dead the by Steam Deck. Yeah. Or Dead by Daylight, that's the one. Um, Not Friday the 13th, uh, the game. There, there was, yes. there was a Friday it's 13th effectively the same there is one. type yes, of game. There's a hundred percent. There's one with Jason. It's like, hey, look, this one's got uh, Jason T.M. in it. Um, yeah. Yes, it, it's the one it, with it Jason very and the one with the other Jasons. <laughs> Jason <laughs> but Statham. I, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, the, the, the developers of Dead by Daylight actually said that, yes, they were going to support the Steam, so kudos to them. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> so let's talk about Experiment 13. Oh man, every time I hear about experiments from Steam, my brain just parses them as like Mystery Science Theater episodes. Uh, but anyways, um, so they uh, released Experiment 13 a couple weeks ago. We talked about it. It is the store-specific pages, uh, so you can get uh, more games related to the games that you're trying to find out. Um the, uh, they've made some adjustments to this uh, where uh, the discount popular originally they were just showing you whatever games you might have been interested in that are cheapest. Now uh, it factors in discount popularity. So for like whatever reason, a game that's normally like $70 is now $20 and a lot of people are buying it, even though there are other games that are like two cents. Now the other one will show up. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a substantial overlap there in the yeah. it'll also try to respect your filters more, which I don't know. I don't know. The fact that they actually updated this to me says that they're going to go forward with this because that's typically been the cadence with these um, Steam ex- Steam Labs experiments. If they, if they come back to them, they're probably going to do them. I'm going to say my experiment and just tangoing with Experiment 13 is going to roll like this. Uh, you, let's just be honest. I, maybe it's just a me thing, but any type of like discovery system Valve has rolled out for me personally this has been bad. I, I've never found something through a, hey, you might enjoy games like this. This Experiment 13 was more confusing than outright bad. I enabled it. I played around with it. And I'm like, all of my nonsense is in different places and I can't sort games like I used to. So I screeched and uh, went back to the comfort of regular ordinary steam. I had to disable it. It's like a YouTube Mm -hmm. update, isn't it? Like when the YouTube changes. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Uh, what about GitHub? When GitHub updated, how long? Did oh, that gee. Oh, yeah. I still, I still don't know where the fucking source download link is. My God. <laughs> but yeah, it is. It very much. It messed with the way I browse Steam because the way I browse Steam is I hover over the uh, categories and then I click on uh, SteamOS and Linux. Then I scroll to the bottom of the page and click uh, browse all new releases that. Th- then that, then you miss how I interact and you get a popsicle and then you miss again. No. Would you quit <laughs> hating on popsicles for one fucking episode? <laughs> Never. <laughs> it's they the suck. four, it's the four clicks. It's the four clicks that I do on the steam store. Regardless, it's like that. Uh, and this very much replaces the, once you do the second click, uh, it, you don't get the browse all games button. You don't. It's just the one infinite scrolling list on that page. No, just no. <laughs> but but haven't you seen like websites from ten years ago? It's all the bridge, the infinite scrolling. <laughs> B- blink tags. I, I'm on one social media that I use with any regularity. It's Twitter, and even that one, I have it broken out via tweet deck See, this into is like a this bunch of different things. Because initially, <laughs> when you think about it, kind of like the idea of um, infinite scroll. But I like even on Reddit, I had to disable that. Was- that. Because that was, I, yeah, that was I, the Reddit enhancement suite, yeah, yeah, Reddit enhancement suite. Out of default, it's got the infinite scroll. I'm like, mm-hmm. no, uh, uh-uh. we 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 need that sense of accomplishment, and we also need to be able to visually <laughs> say it to the end of the page. Not yeah, even that. Done. Not <laughs> even that, Pedro Mateus. I'm talking about just old fashioned. Like, all right, I'm I'm on page 42 right now. It's yeah, time well, to 
put this shit yeah. down and get back to it. <laughs> give, give, give yourself a hard, like, okay, in three more pages, I'm going to call it quits. Right. right. Like, yeah, you, you know you're going to go to that fourth page. It's called doom scrolling for a reason. It, it's, that's not something you want to be doing. <laughs> yeah, it Dooming. is. Like, i got to find which one the grenade is. It's not... <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I just like singing the doom song while I doom scroll. Doomy doomy doom. Dark doom, minute. Doom, doom. Let's talk about dark adventure minute. time. Well, yeah, d- adventure time in the darkness, but not the fun, sexy way. Just uh-huh. in the frustrating platformer way. Yeah. Uh, so this is Dark Minute, Kira's Adventure. It is a. Uh, it has a demo, which is always nice. nice. Uh, but it's a it, bring back. It is a. Wait a uh, minute. Yeah. Was that a mouse cursor? I saw. <laughs> Maybe. Boo. Boo. The game's dead. Uh, nope, it's not worth playing. Look in the trailer. There was a mouse cursor. Oh, no. it. There it is. Look at that. <laughs> it's an affront to it, everything. It, that's there is a mouse cursor. It's Linus Torvalds' mouse cursor. He's injected himself into my Linux operating no, system. Let me be 100% fair with this. The only reason I'm bringing this up because I've made a lot of videos and I, I know this is like, I don't want to notice. We noticed. But yeah, good trailer, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're, uh, it's it's an exploration ba- based platformer. Uh, the twist here is that you basically have a minute to do your exploration and then the lights go out. Uh, and then you kind of just got to you're, you're shit out of luck. You got to take it one little bit at a time. Oh, you two are uh, going to hate that. Oh, absolutely. This <laughs> this game is going to be not 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 something I'm a fan of, especially especially for uh, hard platformers. They are doing the Celeste thing, though, where they give you the instant respawn. So it's not like you got to mm-hmm. fucking redo shit. They, they want you to experiment and dick around, which is good, I think. And for well, right now it's five ninety nine. Uh, you can normally pick it up for about ten bucks. I mean. Seems, seems all right. It's color limbo, at least while the lights are on. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 it's no very much travel. playing with the darkness. Yeah, the, playing with the darkness as the main mechanic, uh, except uh, your protagonist person actually has a bit of a helmet light going on. So you can see in the dark, just not everything at once. Oh, no. I, I was know. thinking of Fez. I always get those two mixed up. Limbo, limbo and Fez. Yeah. Yeah, no, limbo is the dark... Uh, child lost in a dark world and Faz yeah, is the yeah. cutesy with the 3D playing with the perspective platforming. Yeah. <laughs> one of them's a game. Nah. <laughs> one, of the, one of them ran on Linux. <laughs> one a lot of the, the, other. the other one's hey. an ego project. I, yeah, it's an <laughs> exploration <laughs> thing. To, it's it's, a, it, it's something to do. Now, what do we have up next? Aquamarine. It uh, this one has a very nice presentation. It's uh, they describe it as a quiet survival adventure, and right there is like Arm. I don't know, the, man. I'm looking the at this trailer and like some Dilthraki are going to show up or something, man. Is this <laughs> <laughs> basically you have uh, you are stuck on an island and you have to find a way to survive effectively, and it is you're on an alien planet figure it out. Now, my main concern here when it comes to survival elements is how bad the nanny bars are. It's like, can I go for a day without eating? Like I would be able to IRL. Yeah. I wouldn't feel great, but I'd be able you to see fucking that do it. Pedro, Pedro, you have a bubble. You can do anything in a bubble. <laughs> you're, you're a bubble person. Yes. Right. I mean, as soon as you open the bubble, you die of all the uh, native, um, Parasites yeah, the, yeah, yeah, no, you everything like it's yeah. just a methane based atmosphere. You just inhale it and your lungs freeze. Yeah, oh, um, gone. Yep. what I, I, I will say, I am a sucker for a hand drawn aesthetic, and god, this looks real good. Like, man, some work was put into this. I mean, did somebody like leave Artifacts Monday or? Maybe. <laughs> no, see, uh, Artifacts Monday, there would be a lot more makeup on that person. <laughs> mm. Maybe maybe it wasn't the makeup person from Artifacts Monday. Maybe it was the other one. Yeah. The, one could actually people. <laughs> the Carl Woods. Um, Carl. Carl. <laughs> what do we need to run this? Not much. Uh, recommended 64-bit processor. GeForce 9800 GTX. Ah, oh, man. One gig. Okay. So you might be able to play it with that new AMD. Card. Yeah. Uh, that, that's Cream's open shell 3.1. That, mm. that, that's what that means. <laughs> well, you know what? Hey, uh, spiders it's are not- everywhere. They are. They really are <laughs> did, everywhere. Did, hang and on, for did, some did reason, you ever look at Cuphead and be like, you would make this better? <laughs> remove all the color. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> also making the animation look like shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, the animation, you can very much tell where exactly it's looping. But the thing that jumped out at me about uh, spiders everywhere is that the entire um, uh, bits of the Steam page where the developer got to write in 
are in caps. I was glad you went caps. exactly there. I was like, are we going to overlook the caps? Um, why are you? It's like, yeah. why are you shouting at me? Yeah. <laughs> at least it's, it's free to play. It's a cute 2D I- I'll give game. It that. <laughs> so cute. It is free to play. And, uh, but yes, it is very clearly trying to ape the um, cuphead aesthetic. Uh, Little baby With poop. less color. <laughs> effectively i mean <laughs> why you, not? You, i mean for a like fuck around bullshit project i'm down with this i mean this is better than shit that we've reviewed yeah fair fair enough yeah, uh, yes uh, it's uh, better uh, than biscuits too i was i was gonna say little baby poop was my uh, rapper nickname back when i was uh <laughs> freestyle mc <laughs> oh man 2020 was so long ago uh wasn't it <laughs> What do I, oh, okay, just don't drive. <laughs> yeah, just don't drive. <laughs> yep. What what are, what are the people saying about Little Baby? Great game. Uh, check me out, check. checking it out. This ah. is what I'm talking about. Free to play. It's like of the nine reviews, they all seem to be positive. So yeah, they're they're all they're all come look at my YouTube channel. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, uh-huh. out of the nine, one, two. <laughs> We got a key for free, three. so we're going to give you a positive review. It's a free game. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is free. <laughs> <laughs> listen, 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 I paid you negative dollars to review my game. <laughs> Speaking of free games. Yes, very much. Uh, this one wasn't free, um, though I had it for a long, long time. Okay. You Oil Rush, you may remember this? it. Oh, man. It's yeah. been a long I, road. I pl- uh, I think it may have been in a bundle, not a humble no, bundle, no, no, but no. it may have been let me tell you in about one it. of let, the other ones. Let, let me tell you about Oil Rush. Way back in the day when I started this, <laughs> I asked them, they're like, hey, we're going to be doing a Linux thing. Uh, we're going to make Oil Rush available for Linux. I'm like, hey, guys, can I, uh, like, you can just make a copy? Like, when you get it ready, and they're like, we don't provide review copies for uh, smaller and different. I'm like, well, all right, fine. Then we got a little bit of traction, like a year on, and I was like, "Hey, would you like a review?" Come and like, "Hi, motherfucker, do you remember this?" I'm Ben Stone. I don't forget <laughs> shit. I hold grudges. By the way, fuck you, game. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, now it's free for everyone, and yeah, it is a Unigen engine-based strategy game. It is very much built by the people who built the engine. Uh, it is effectively a tech demo. It is. It barely qualifies as a strategy game. There's exactly two things you can click on, and that 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 that's it. That's what it boils down to. Uh, it is. It looks very good. Like to this day, it still looks very very good. I remember Oof. running it on the mixed reviews. Um, <laughs> yes, it, like I said, as a game, bare fucking bones. It is a tech demo, uh, but it is. It's free now. I I don't know. I I remember they they couldn't sell to anyone. Well, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, this is that game that was made with Unengine or Unengine. Pick a better name for that damn thing. Unigine. Unigine. Uh, And no, 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 not that game. The other one. The other one is that robot game. You guys remember that thing? Yeah, the cradle. Yeah. Which they also cocked up by not allowing people to change the controls on. I too hold grudges for some things. We were absolutely (laughs) just floored that somebody tangoed. With the yeah. engine. I'm like, whoa, you made a game with that thing? Ha. Huh. Uh, so there's that. You know, uh, people know it from superposition, the benchmarking, the thing that like four years ago, they were like, we're totes adding Vulcan, you guys. And they still haven't done that. So uh, <laughs> their clients are like military applications, flight sims and stuff like that, not gamers. So uh, uh, yeah. Uh, at least this is free. You can go play around with it if you want. It's not going to cost anything. Pedro was doing happy laps in our Discord either yesterday or today at some point. He was like, look at the U engine, you guys. I'm doing circles in the water. <laughs> yes, because I, I remember back in the day when I first got the game, I still had that laptop. The calculator, it was an i3-370M with a 5650 HD Radeon. And I could barely do 30 on the lowest settings at 1080p now uh at 2560 by 1440 i'm getting 120 plus or if i put it down at 1080p 200 plus wow so, it's almost yeah. like the game's from 2013 <laughs> yes <Yeah. laughs> yes it's, al- it's almost like you have a current gen ryzen cpu and a gtx 1080 shock 
Uh, no, no, it's not a current generation. It's a 3700. That's uh, already one generational. <laughs> Shh, it's fine. Uh, you just, you just don't get resizable bar on NVIDIA. I was That's playing it, yes. that game at 60 FPS on Jordan's living room heater. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> Wesnoth, which is weird. Yeah, it's it's so weird talking about Wesnoth in the Steam segment, because for a long time, we were just talking about it in the regular news section because it's an open source game. But now that it's on Steam, like a lot of open source projects, we can talk about it here, and it gets a little bit more... Better better optimization and placement. Uh, patch 16, 116, 2 and 17.0 beta are out. Um, and there are a lot of fixes that really only matter to you if you give a shit about Wesnoth. Uh, but you do get some vSync support. Uh, the, la- the language button will now actually display in your configured language. So if you don't speak English, you don't have to worry about what that fucking word means anymore. Um, and lots of little fixes for the campaigns. That's for the 162 uh, release. And yeah, there's a lot more shit it, uh, added for the 117 release. Do people um, still run across these? Because, I mean, we didn't have much in the way of options back in, you know, the two, the aught of 03. Um, but I definitely played this, even though it wasn't my gem, but it was a game that I could play. You, you could install it from your distro's repo. Yeah, right? like, yeah, you install it from the distro's repo. That's why this was the first uh, Linux game that I ever played when I started playing with Free, fr- <laughs> Free Orion was mine. Hmm. Yeah, no, uh, Battle for Wesnoth, uh, and then it's like, wait a second, didn't Neverwinter Nights have a uh, Linux version? Oh, hey, that was the second game I played. <laughs> yeah, we do want to thank Mir for sending that little bit in. And yeah, I mean, it, it's strange, but like taking notes from Blender and places like that, I mean, this is a great, Steam is a excellent tool for keeping track of open source projects. Because, yeah, can I mean, you shut up to date? There, right? Like gone are the days of, I mean, for me personally, I can only speak for me. Uh, it's having a games folder. Remember your games folder where all your downloaded games were that you had to like go to that directory folder. All right. I, 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 I still, I still have, have that. That. That, is, that is the mount point for all the other tribes that are hosting the games. <laughs> you fuck mother yeah, I peasants. still have that. And the steam apps uh, folder is inside that folder. So yes, <laughs> you, you just got a problem with nostalgia, man. You need to come just, Rip it, let, let it go, peel it off. Well, this is this is this is why I'm playing Battle of Westmouth still. <laughs> it's just that I, I remember that folder primarily because you know, pretty much everything up until like we really got hit hard with uh, like Humble Indie Bundle One. Mm-hmm. I it wasn't really an excuse for a folder, you might have like the game on your desktop or two, or anything like that, or just in your own directory because I didn't have desktop icons back then, but well. When Humble came out, like five, six games, like, yeah, then you had to create a folder for your Linux games. It was strange times. Yeah, the the, the Mojo installer default location sucked. Mm -hmm. And so you needed to stick them in a place where you could actually find things. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Ryan. I I, I know you you did your best with that, but... God Are damn, you it's, saying it's that uh, defaulting to USR local bin? <laughs> Listen, that's where we used to put shit when Opt was full. <laughs> oh, right. God, I mean, how lost? How lost? Do you have to be before you end up in Opt looking for shit? You're like, all right, maybe. Uh, well, Google. So, so I, 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 you I mean, install so a Google thing, it goes into Opt. <laughs> If, so if I'm compiling something, it mm-hmm. goes into opt. That's how I know that I built it is because ah, it's sitting in opt. Unle- unless it's Google and Google and Chrome installs an opt. All the Google shit installs an opt. Mm-hmm. Some things still use it. Blackmagic is a big fan of opt. Uh, Harrison makes boss things like that. And those it, are it, it's just, a Unixism, right? It, like, it's yeah. an old thing. Like I, I would say somebody optional software using a modern <laughs> somebody new analytics, you know, and I say new within like five, 10 years, like, the fuck's an opt directory? Why? Why is yeah. this a thing? Huh? It's it's just, yeah, an extra empty directory you have. Yeah. It's an artifact of bygone days. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's that's why that other Linux distribution, I forget what it's fucking called, with uh, everything just under programs. Oh, right. whatever. Yeah, we were yeah. talking about that, yeah. On, on uh, Weekly um, Daily Wednesday. Yeah, that, that, that's why stuff like that is so interesting to me. Void? It's like, it, it's, no. it's still Linux, but it's breaking away from that traditional unix structure right yeah it's yeah it's, it's, how it's is interesting that stuff. i mean neither of you are necessarily fresh to it but how is it like getting the because windows everything is just under the drive right period just 
C some, some d- d- depends. It's it's user specific. We've apparently. absolutely there's a drive, and then there's the Windows part folder, and then there's programs, and there's the. We've users, covered the fact that I can. Uh, I think you guys are like trying to find shit because hey, we do with Windows stuff now because of Proton and trying to find like config files yeah, and stuff. I get lost that, uh, as fuck. Yeah, ro- I just roaming, go to yeah, yeah, it's like under uh, users, Steam, whatever, and sometimes it's under like the games thing or yeah. Data so, so, or, sometimes it's under program files. Sometimes it's under program files six eighty six. Sometimes it's a little. There's little bits in all the places. Yeah, it's, it's fucking terrible. That, does that just make sense? Like from the Windows side, you're like, no, that naturally. No. This is no, no, no. It's not because it, it's not uh, consistent if you want, on the Windows side. Mm. Yeah. And then if you want to find, say, the shadow volumes, there's a hidden uh, system volume information folder that you, even if you are, even if you have the highest possible uh, rights that a user has, you can't ever see that folder. You need to log in with the local administrator account for that machine to be able to see the folder and find the... um, but the shadow here, volumes, here, for example. <laughs> but here, here's the thing: that that functionality purely exists because people on Windows keep fucking shit up, and you need to have some way yes. to pull back. Um, <laughs> all right, all right. All right I, I think up. we have digressed way too far. Coming up next: Zoom, zoom, zoom. Watch out, tumble. Watch out, zoom. Gog. You're zoom. gonna get zoomed or zoomed. I don't know. I've been posed a conundrum, and I'm still um, deliberating on it. But hey. Stick around. The news will be uh, coming around. We don't start with um, drivers this week. That was last week. But uh, we do have some uh, very interesting projects and curious launches to talk about. But before we get to that, we need to thank you, the people watching. And, well, you too. You are very much an integral part of Linux Gamecast. Nah. I I don't believe it. Yeah. (laughs) You are, you are here before me. So yeah, you are, uh, the, uh, yeah, no, uh, to thank you, the listener and the viewer, if you're watching the video version, why would you do that to yourself? I don't know, but you can, it, it is a thing. Also, the other thing you can do, um, is go Post test password that, in, uh, Discord. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go test that thing that, uh, Linux Nero just posted in Discord there. See if that's a password. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, what Linux Nero is always goes like, oops, that happened. And I always like to type in something <laughs> on my keyboard and like, oops, my Velociraptor just ran across my keyboard. LOL. Oops. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. You know, if you, but you know what? It's, it's a recurring problem. We need to pay for Raptor cages and you can help fund that by heading on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Become a Patreon. You get some cool stuff. Uh, Subscribing at any level uh, gets you access to our Discord channel, which you can also get by uh, subbing to us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Linux Gamecast. Uh, But, you know, being a Patreon gets you some other cool stuff. Like, at certain levels, you get early show note access. You definitely get your name in the credits. Uh, You get access to uncut VODs three days early. Um, You can participate in uh, the game, the Trackmania shit that uh, Ben's doing. Uh, I play Armella with people on in Discord sometimes, so you can tune in for that, Um, or you can join in for that. Good bot. Good bot. Yeah. Good. <laughs> go. Good. 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 Timely. On so, yeah, uh, you you get access to the video feed for the pre pre super shows, and which is that extra hour of. Let's call it content that we produce. It's content. It's uh, the warm up show behind the scenes. And Strider, you need to be careful like that because somebody posted a password like that. That would make me go check all of my Google generated ones. I'm like, uh oh. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. That, 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 that's that's some password generator ass pass, password if I've ever seen one. Um, we got some we got some patrons. We got to think. Uh, we got to think. Ogi Wan Kenobi, our only hope. Help help us helping us and Menno Simons, the founder of the Mennonite movement, or just Menno. I don't know. Yeah, uh, both of them have uh, kind of popped in for the Trackmania thing, and that's awesome. Remind that you can just do a Twitch sub if you want to come in for that. that that's uh, that's going to be kind of interesting, everyone. And we'll be back Tuesday to knock that out. But we want to thank you and take advantage of it. Come hop in our Discord, and that's where we're at the other six days of the week, talking all kind of mad things. We even got a like separate Trackmania room, which I set aside because I kind of foresaw the... Uh, Non-stop Trackmania talk, the shit I, talk. <laughs> <laughs> Even that, I'm like, don't you realize you're talking about a video game? Like, we're trying to idle. I'm like, quit talking in an <laughs> idle room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding around, but yeah, we keep all the Drake Mania stuff, like, related to Drake, mostly so my old ass will catch it. And I can, like, boom, boom, like, okay, somebody's got a question about this and this and this. But it's kind of brilliant. I want to thank each and every one of you for making everything we do possible. 
We got the store. If you want to put some LGC all over your face, chest, and neck, we do have those possibilities. You put me in your chest. You can, right in the middle, too, man. Right in the, right right in the cleavage. cleavage. That was a strategic Jordan, man. He's aimed right there in the sternum. So aim for Jordan, guaranteed kill. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> It's, I, 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 I can literally paint a giant target on my face if it helps. <laughs> <laughs> we got wish zones, uh, Amazon wish list. If you want to pick us up something, we're just doing this as we're doing it and get to send in a little note and that's the thing we'll read and be like, Oh no, we're going to read a thing. Try to be creative. If you're going to be edgy about sending in a note, cause we will read it and do keep that in mind. I got a wall back do, here. Do a, do a spelling grammar pass too. Cause we're going to read it verbatim. So very, very true, man. Uh, this is the find up standing cannibal wall that you see the blinky things back there. These, uh, if you picked up something from the studio, I'm going to write the damn name back here. That, 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 that's at uh, LinuxGameCast.com. Mouse your mouse over the support yeah. button. It's all there in the main menu now. It no is. more submenus. I, advanced. I, I went, you know what? Yeah. That link is now a hashtag. So just, oh. <laughs> Learned that trick a long time ago. Thanks for letting us do this. And uh, can we get in the news now? I, I, I'm just not a big fan of shilling. I, I like to I do it. I, I, I well, think it's well. infinitely better than like reading ads, but. <laughs> At least we're not shilling for Skype. We got a shill for Zoom. Zoom. Zoom, Zoom? Yeah. The, 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 this is a poor choice of name, if nothing else. But uh, they, the, there's a new gaming platform. Yeah. Zoom-platform.com. It is a... It, it, it does have Linux games, of course. We're talking about it on Linux Gamecast. Not necessarily a requirement, but it helps. But uh, yeah, no, I've been reading through their uh, About Us page, and they go, Zoom's mission is to design, create, and publish traditional and interactive entertainment with a Generation X transmedia appeal. And if what? that doesn't want to, <laughs> if that doesn't make you want to run headfirst into the wall, <laughs> so you wipe that particular sentence off of your memory. Can, can, can I inhale your, some uh, lead line, lead, leaded fuel gas fumes instead? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, apparently they have some uh, people who have been in the gaming industry or at least the managerial side of the gaming industry for a while. You have Bernie Solar from uh, Sega and the person who was the president of Atari at the time uh, that they um, were developing the Lynx handheld. Is that How a timely is that? <laughs> 2014 and the um, there's also jordan freeman uh who is the least interesting of the freeman the dragon brothers. was good at jack up that unicorn <laughs> yeah. get back with that. Gordon, gordon freeman's brother gordon jordan freeman yeah and, yeah, and morgan uh, freeman gordon freeman john freeman and jordan freeman <laughs> what, what what about morgan freeman isn't he a part of the family <laughs> I, I isn't that their dad <laughs> maybe so yeah, uh, <laughs> that was always my head cannon. Is Morgan Freeman's the dad? <laughs> this is kind of the thing, man. At the end of the day, classic games and uh, some not so classic games. Uh, and I'm saying far as like being new. I mean, I saw Deep Sky Derelicts on there. That's a recent game. Um, that used to be my. Uh, let's see, straight up. Yeah, you just download them. That's kind of a novel yeah. approach in 2022, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> They're selling Linux versions, so that's nice, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I found Mega Race 2, which is a game that I hadn't seen since 1996. There was a demo CD uh, that came with the magazine that I played the demo of that. It's been a long time since I've seen that game, so uh, kudos. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, hey, more options, more better. We absolutely do say that. And, yeah, I think that's kind of the lunch they're coming <laughs> to kind of nom on, man. You know, I don't think they're looking to be a Steam competitor. It's more like, you know, especially... You know, Humble's never going to release a client, so he just uses a blank storefront. Same thing with this. You know, hey, yeah, another place yeah. you can go. It looks, it looks very Steam like. I'll give them that. Just, it's just make sure to download your Humble games before they stop hosting them. <laughs> now, let's talk about see you, see me, see you, see me. No, or not not ICQ. You? He's CQ. You can't do that. See CMU. See me. See, when I say CMU, I think of like a sea cow, but you might also think of Nintendo. Somebody in Spain's just like, fuck off. My God. Yes. Yes, Moo. Oh, oh my God. I've 
can't fucking think anymore. What the hell am I talking about? Uh, Simu, it's an emulator. It's for the Wii U and a little bit of Switch stuff as well. Uh, and uh, they are, um, they're, they have, they've announced the roadmap. Um, and chief among there, if for our, for those of us playing at home doing the Control F Linux game, oh my God, there is an in progress Linux port, sort of, kind of, not really. There is some dependencies on that and some of the other stuff in the, um, in their cha- or in their uh, roadmap there, like the QBB generic audio back back end to get away from uh, direct sound. Uh, they need to switch away from Visual Studio's build system to something a little more system agnostic like CMake and maybe open source. Although if you want to get that open source, if you want to get that Linux port done sooner rather than later, maybe you want to maybe you want to open that source. Isn't and, this kind of uh, like the first thing you thought when you read that? And I'm like, uh, you got the steps backwards there. You just, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like you want that done <laughs> on a, over a weekend. Um, <laughs> I know. Yeah, no, this, there's a lot of direct X uh, dependencies because they're using uh, the XVA for uh, H.264 encoding and decoding. So they're going to have to shed that. And like Jordan already mentioned, direct sound or X audio, that that too is direct X based. So this pretty much explains why um, an emulator was not on Linux for the longest time, <laughs> but it worked reasonably well with wine. So a lot of people were actually playing it like that. Now I have a, a look through the list of, um, Wii U games. Like, okay, let's look for exclusive games that only ever came out on the Wii U. Zenoblade Chronicles X. Shut up, Pedro. I'm going uh, about two games. <laughs> <laughs> really it was long. like, yeah, no, I'd, I'd play Xenoblade Chronicles too. Maybe Bayonetta too. Yeah. But, isn't Bayonetta 2 out on the Switch as well? Oh, uh, yeah. All, all, all of them are, actually. It looks all right. Like, it's going to be... Right. Um, I, I've came to an executive decision that I'm not buying a fuck-mothering Switch for a video game, because I know that is it. I will play it, I will stream it, and I will give away a Switch to someone. I can always <laughs> use the backup. <laughs> While That's videotaping it and going, sorry, Jared. Well, shit. <laughs> Motherfucker. I'm excited to see this. I mean, for the longest time. Now, um, they, how are they currently dealing with finance? Don't they have a Patreon? I think I've, uh, uh, they, they do. There, there was, uh, there was some confusion a while ago about what they could and could not put behind their Patreon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I remember that. I don't remember the specifics about it, but I do remember it being centered around Simu. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Hope, I mean, Seeing it natively on Linux would be nice. It would definitely open up the door for it being ported to a lot of other architectures. I think that's the big one, because once you get it on Linux, yes. then you're going to get people looking to compile it on power, on ARM, on all this shit. So, yeah, that that's definitely going to speed up platform adoption. That's very like, neat, because, I mean, yeah. one of the things I did try, um, like, strangely enough, Simu runs really good under Wine, which, mm-hmm. like, okay. And, uh, yeah, being able to play that, native having Simu on your steam deck. Cause we don't really have a really workable performant. I should say Wii U emulator on Linux. Yeah. Still, still in progress. So yeah. So, so something like this definitely, definitely be a huge win for sure. And unfortunately, like this hipsters the and YouTubers are going out and buying for that up all the Wii U's. <laughs> yeah. I should have bought a Wii U when they were a hundred bucks for a complete kit with like the tablet controller. Now. Yeah. I mean, I mean we should, we should have, we should have bought those 1080 TIs. They were 300 bucks, but you know, yes, here we are. 350, 350, 1080 TI. Oh God. You, you didn't. <laughs> no. Want to buy one? I spent, I spent $1,100 <laughs> on my 1080 Ti. So, uh, Go fuck yourself. That is kind of brilliant. <laughs> um, mad people doing mad things. No exception here. This is the Jack Project. It's about no description website or topics provided. Fascinating thing, you might think. Why are you talking about it? Well, what is it called? Open goal is kind of the point to this. Uh, they want to get, was it Jack and Dexter? Jack and Dexter, yep. Yeah, written a long time ago. What, what was that? PS2, right? Yeah. PS2, yeah. So it was yep. written using goal. Um, what the fuck is gold then <laughs> think about lisp with drugs man oh, um, no. yeah, Naughty Dog, lisp. Yeah, even Naughty Dog had to get rid of it uh, they stepped away from gold when they were purchased by Sony Sony's like get that shit out of here you know we're going to be doing everything in C C++ uh, they you're wondering how do you go about doing something like this because there's not really a good guide for dealing with anything put together with gold 
Well, you know, the C code from the game was compiled, Jack, Jack and Dexter, no optimizations, you know, all the debugging symbols, all that nonsense was left in there and goal <laughs> string based table for global functions and variables and all your other type bullshit. So they got all that for free out of the gate. No, this is very much doable. And of course it's going to be available on Linux. Plus they don't think the goal compiler uh, did too much, uh, you know, just trickety doo doo bullshit. Yeah, like platform platform architecture specific optimization. Yeah. It, it just it's it's just essentially a VM for the whatever the hell is running. Surprisingly, I think it's going to be a pretty straightforward reverse engineering project. And I just wanted to give this a shout out. I never played Jack and Dexter, but I saw a lot of people like going. Oh. Yeah, I, I had fun with it on uh, PlayStation PS2. Two. Was a lot of people's you know people who yeah. are active on pa- the pa- internet right now. That was their first console. So. <laughs> Pedro, Pedro and I are definitely the PS2 kids mm. here for sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had and I, and the I, Master System and the Saturn before that, but yeah, the PS2 was the I, one that I played the most on. <laughs> I, I, I had a brick Game Boy and then 64 and then I moved to PS2. Yeah, but uh, the, uh, so uh, they're still working on decompiling it. They said they're about two thirds of the way there and they have enough to get an OpenGL renderer working, which is actually really cool. Uh, but they also got to get to work on uh, the compiler, like Ben said. So uh, then then it comes to actually porting the game to something usable, like like x86 or something. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, no, I like me some crazy and these folks are exactly my kind of crazy. Yes. <laughs> game preservation the hard way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, other companies ain't going to do that shit. Nope. They're gonna, they're gonna pull. Naughty Dog clearly doesn't care about Jack and Dexter all that much anymore. So yeah. Well, hold, hold on. <laughs> Incoming cease and desist because Jack and Dexter the the trilogy is coming out for PS Five. Listen, <laughs> oh Sony, uh, Sony is going to release the uh, remastered we are, we are almost <laughs> up to one frame per second. So shut up. Uh, no, it's, <laughs> it, it's stealing sales away from our new game, man. It has the potential. We need to shut it down. They make good videos in here. Um, Project target. All right. Like, yeah, shit. They, they, There's like, movement. Yep. Yep. <laughs> no bones there, there, there is, there is definitely a level. They've you, imported you get, some textures. Yeah. You get to play as a peanut. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, it's peanut. <laughs> he's, he's the main playable character in Jack and Daxter. <laughs> Howdy ho. hundred percent could have told me that. <laughs> That's Mr. Hanky. <laughs> so, That's what that looked like. <laughs> uh, a while back, we talked about like, like what's going to be going down with Intel because their lead and like Vulcan dude was like, peace out. I'm gone. It's been fun. You know, he didn't go in like a ball of flames or anything. He's like, I'm taking you all down with me. He's like, yeah, I'm leaving Intel. And a lot of people went fucking one, mate. That's not good. Yeah, but uh, it turns out it kind of is. Uh, so Jason Ekstrand, uh, Intel driver and Vulcan specialist extraordinaire, uh, has moved on to color. Call that call uh-huh. a <laughs> No, but uh, if you don't know what Clapper is, they're a uh, C move. Uh, They are they are an open source um, incubator. They provide funding and development resources for open source projects, Uh, and a lot a lot of work. What they do is working with the uh, Mesa uh, graphics stack project. Uh, and so Jason has some interfacing with them in, with his day-to-day job at Intel. Uh, he was talking about how uh, he wanted to help work on improving Mesa as a whole, but, you know, being an Intel employee, he has to focus on the Intel-specific bits. Uh, and he was getting a little frustrated with that until uh, someone from uh, Calabra was like, uh, hey, yo, y'all want to jump ship and come work for us? And what's really cool is they basically said, you get to define your own job. We just want you on our team doing cool shit because you're getting shit done. Um, and so uh, he goes on to talk about some of the things maybe he's going to look at doing. Uh, but, you know, getting a high paying job with autonomy is the real dream. Congrats, Jason. I fucking hate you. Oh, man. <laughs> that is. And I mean, this is the, old, the old getting hired over IRC switcher. I'm like, oh, that's impressive in itself. But. That, that's such good news. I mean, yes, of course, now that we've said, this is great, this is what something horrible is going to happen. But <laughs> oh, yeah, for, for the time fire. being, like in theory, this is great. Being a, Getting dropped off like, hey, you're really fascinated at doing this stuff. This is what you're good at. This is what you want to play with. We're going to finance your ability to do that. Now, go have fun. 
And that really that's very good. Yeah, that, that seems to kind of be the modus operandi from Calabra anyway. And I'm like, hey, let, we want cool people to do cool shit. Make it rain. And Intel Chops, uh, working for the open source side, that's, uh, well, it's going to be a fine line to write the uh, the line between, you know, the stuff that you did for Intel that you can't really talk about or reproduce in any significant way and improving well, Everything else, he, the 3D uh, side. Now, let me go ahead and say <laughs> this, though. I mean, he's primarily working on an open source stack, so. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, if that was already what he was doing, then yeah, probably okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's just uh, going to uh, be working uh, with uh, his old code and it, calling it, it, it bullshit. Kinda, it's uh, different when you're dealing with open source. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, a, a couple, a couple, uh, a couple spoiler or a couple promises that he's throwing out in the air that he's not saying he's absolutely going to do, but some ideas of some stuff that may or may not be coming down the pipe. Ray tracing and ride V. Uh, open CL 3.0 everywhere. Um, do yeah. free Dreno drivers? Maybe. Sky's the limit. So Jason is going to be, I don't know, keep keep an eye on his blog He's gonna and uh, his Git commits. He's going to be working on some cool stuff. Indeed. No. Yeah. It wouldn't be a Pedro segment without steering wheel. Do you even own a steering wheel, Pedro? Is this some pipe dream? Uh, not currently, no. no. <laughs> I, I'm, it I'm is the one here who actually owns a steering like. wheel. <laughs> do, do you just like hold up a dinner plate? <laughs> yeah, with, with the controller. No, no, Jordan has a yeah. child in the house, so that probably is very much a possibility. No, I I do want I do very much like the whole steering wheel uh, game input. I do very much, uh, but I Dark don't Souls? have room in this apartment I to have Dark one. Souls with the steering wheel. I, I no, will uh, probably wait, try. Blind, when blindfolded I have with a steering wheel. But, uh, okay, now, I currently I, I want some like, <laughs> monstrous force feedback too. Yeah, whenever you get hit, it just goes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like you got hit by a car. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, this, well, this may be very much the thing that uh, people on Linux will be or should be using uh, to manage their steering wheels. This is oversteer. It's up to version 0.7.0. Uh, it's still in pre-release, whatever that means. It's open source software, come on. Uh, and they've added support for the Logitech G923, the Thrustmaster T150, and the T500RS. Um, there's some uh, extra translations, and you'd have rules going to correct places. But yeah, this isn't drivers, so to speak. This is a management utility. It basically allows you to configure what each button does, how far for those, and, uh, for those wheels that have say up to 900 degrees rotation, you can actually limit that rotation to only 180 in each direction. So that's, that's very good. And we need more stuff like this. What I didn't see were screenshots of a GUI. I that, was, that's the bit that I'm concerned about <laughs> getting there. And that, that's what I was reading over just then. I'm like, ah, you gotta like oversteer it uses my profile. The gnome. G. So yeah, it uses, uh, it pulls a lot of, uh, gnome dependencies. So it probably is just GTK bare bones ish window, but that's fine. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. They, they, as long as the, it has a good, the new, <laughs> the new release is out. Uh, that's not seven zero. It comes with support for three new wheels and, uh, you can customize the UDEV rule location on compile time. So they're warning you, you may need to clear stuff out of uh, user local Etsy, UDEV rules dot D or <gasps> Etsy UDEV rules dot D. Uh, if you've put them there manually before mm-hmm. <laughs> USR lib <laughs> UDEV rules dot D <laughs> or, or, or that there, there's like, th- there's like four places you can cram those fuckers, man. It, yes. <laughs> the, the, the point is double check, double check that you don't have conflicting shit. Mm-hmm. I just, because it will conflict. <laughs> this is good to see. This is fantastic. You know, Farrell did a bit of work with, um, driving wheels for the, um, mm-hmm. yeah. F1. Yeah. yeah. The F1, F1, fun. Yep. F1 uh, and, um, Dirt, dirt, dirt rally and the grid gird gir, 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 auto squirt gir, yes. gird <laughs> yeah that's got a decent man um i it does have a very functional gui according to that video and that was yeah it, it is just a gdk3 that gui so that's good that's very good yes <laughs> I, I, I mean yeah b- basic basic is fine right like when, once you get into like yeah. a really wishy like complicated ui is like where just the fuck is expose thing? everything that your software can do expose that into gui that's fine well, I mean, this is like the whole thing, man. I mean, this is a, we got to make Windows users feel at home. We got to have blinky, wushy, unnecessary system hogging resource UI Shut shit. Shut up, NVIDIA drivers for Windows. 
No one asked you. Come on, we can make something like Pulse in the corner. Or the AMD graphics software or the Ryzen Master, which isn't even official AMD software, but everyone's on I'm, that I'm, shit. I'm, 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 I'm going to take your word on that because I don't, I don't fuck with Windows. Oh, man. Uh, all right. Well, coming up next, uh, the instructions were definitely easy to read. The gameplay wasn't. Uh, we're taking a look at uh, Easy Red 2. <laughs> Welcome back to the Chairquisition. This is the easy to follow part of the uh, of the segment where we tell you about it, where we take a game, run it on a bunch of different Linux distributions with slightly different hardware across all of them, and we give you a final result based on the divinely inspired, uh, emanated, so sophistic um, chair system, lawn chairs. It, we 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 give it. We rate it on a scale from one to four lawn chairs. And just to keep them entertained, uh, they forced us to do it in under three minutes or less. Yeah, and uh, yeah, with or we explode, we die. It's crazy. Uh, so this week we're taking a look at Easy Red Two, developed by Marco Amadei on the Unity Engine. You can pick it up for about eight dollars US. What is it? Fight massive battles between infantry, armored vehicles, tanks, cannons, and planes. Realistically manage your weapons and equipment. Coordinate with your squad and tactically navigate large, fully destructible open world maps. Experience the WW Two in like, single player, no. PvP, and co-op. I see you, nerd. Get Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, in in this case, the nail of our podcast is Pedro. So I got a bitch of an itch on my left ass cheek. Let's go. <laughs> no, uh, but yes, uh, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X and the GTX 1080, easy to read because that is how the logo is spelled, uh, launches out of the box. I don't think there is a way to actually turn VSync off. If you're wondering why that seems to be... Um, 48 FPS uh, seems to be the cap there. That that that's V sync at 144 uh, cap. Why I don't know. Why did why uh, you just it doesn't put it matter on which 1080p Pedro? <laughs> uh, because I was playing in full screen 2560. Uh, but yeah, it is. Did uh, you try? No matter what he didn't try. I didn't. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> I, I, it wouldn't have done the, any good, Pedro. Hey, go, just go. I don't know, but yeah, uh, no matter what FPS cap you pick, there's always going to be a, um, some matter of VSync happening. It almost holds 60 if you tone down the grass to the Unity default, but there's some visual glitches. And uh, if you're looking at the video version, you'll be seeing those in a moment. Uh, the sounds, well, they're, they're okay. Fun. It could have been fun. Uh, there's no feedback. Like, out of the box, there's no feedback. No matter what gun you pick, they all convey the same feeling of shooting spitballs out of a hollowed-out big pen. I had to turn on all of the hit markers and feedback UI elements that you see there. It's like, you see, the covering fire makes your character twitch. That was very nice. That, I actually like that. That was a very clever touch. But, yeah, you also get, like, a grayish marker on the HUD. It's like, cool. Very nice. Very well done. But if you don't turn that on, you have no idea. Now, <clears throat> we've seen this kind of game before. Uh, there's Tannenberg, there was Verdun. Th those games were much better. To be fair, I think there was a lot more people behind, you know, Verdun and Tannenberg. And I think Corvo Studio is just basically Marco Amadei. So this is impressive for a one-person effort. But in the grand scheme of things, it's a bit rough. That is a bit glitchy. It's so glitchy. <laughs> Two chairs. Uh. <laughs> yeah, on Fedora 35, 64 bit with the R9 3900X GTX 1080 Ti. It does launch out of the box. There's not really a resolution setting. I wanted to dick around with some of the graphical options. You can have dynamic resolution or fixed resolution, whatever the fuck that means. Uh, and you can set the like the max FOV, the frame cap stuff, blah, blah, blah. The best you can do is put it in Windows mode and maybe drag it into like a slightly smaller window. Yeah. The the controls. Okay, there, 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 there's some stuff here. So standard was for mo movement. It does the Q and E thing for tilt, so it makes uh, F use. Vehicles, on the other hand, oh man, you're gonna need a third fucking hand to deal with that. Um, graphically, yeah, like, like, n nothing beyond what Pedro said. 
you definitely got to crank it down to make it absolutely playable. And like, even then you can't fucking tell what the hell is going on. It's very, very, it's very realistic in that regard. The, the actual fog of war, um, sounds, yeah, there, there's some actual voice acting in here, which, you know, is not awful, but it's not great. Um, fun. Yeah. More like easy to die. And there's uh, the glitchiness. <laughs> yeah. See, so here, here my, I have a problem with simulation in my video games. I don't necessarily want realistic nitty gritty. I want, power fantasy and escapism. And that requires verisimilitude where you massage the non fun elements out of the game just for the sake of the gameplay stuff like being able to see my enemies and being able to tell what's going on would be nice. Even with the, the hit markers and whatnot, like you cannot see what the fuck is going on. Um, the vehicle and artillery controls are especially Rube Goldbergian and demand multiple humans. Uh, if you want to get actually anything done, like the tutorial for doing the artillery fire and the tank stuff, it's like my, my Lord, I wouldn't, I would not want to rely on the bots to do any of this stuff. Other than that, you got to like switch using the arrow keys. It's, it's crazy. Uh, I got to agree with Pedro. It's a valiant attempt at something the developer really wants to see something they're very passionate about. And like, functions, but we've definitely seen a lot better implementations in Verdun, in Tannenberg, Day of Defeat, that kind of stuff. I, given, given that I gave those other games two chairs and this one doesn't quite rise to it, I kind of got to give it one. Sorry, dude. Yeah. I mean, this is like, anytime you talk about a project made by one person, man, you, you got to step back and look at as, as a whole. And well, let me tell you how it ran on Debian 11. Threadripper 1920X 2060. It launched out of the box, keyboard and gerbil. They worked as expected, even supporting controllers for that added realism, man. Uh, no option for setting resolution whatsoever. You put it in a window, but it's going to be whatever size window uh, your desktop is. I tried to resize it, didn't have it on this end. I might have missed it, though, due to what can only be described artfully as a god awful menu system. Not alone thinking about this. That menu system was, I, I don't even, I don't have words to describe it. You got to hunt for things. Uh, as far as the sound, sounds go pure. You know, you shoot something, it makes a shooty sound. Fair enough. Feet make noise when you walk. Now, this is an $8 shooty pew pew war game made, as I said, and as I pointed out, a single person. Uh, and I mean, it plays like a shooty pew pew war game made by a single person who's kind of got a ways to go as far as uh, game development I'm just being honest. This is my personal opinion. Now, I bring that up since single developer was used. I read through the reviews after I get everything written out on the Steam page. And um, that, that was brought up as some sort of get out of jail free card for the playability and basically just overall presentation of Easy Red 2. Have a look at a game like Bright Memory if you want to see the other end of the spectrum of made by one person. Because... There's a bit of a gap. There's a bit of the gap. That's all I'm saying. Easy Red 2 reminds me of an old free-to-play game, America's Army, like from the early 2000s, <laughs> but a lot worse. I mean, there there were nine people playing, because, you know, I did the single player, and I'm like, well, this is getting boring. Let's see. To my shock and surprise, I think there were like four servers, nine people spread out between them. Hopped in a couple, played around for a minute. Um, random teams, you know, you pick USA, Germany, Japan, something like that. And... It was just your old school runabout and shoot, followed by standing on an area and like taking it over, capture the flag type stuff. Single player wasn't really much better. I mean, the AI settings is something I take issue with because the AI seems to go from just like full metal derp to uh, aimbot is your two settings on that, which is a little unfortunate. Now, unlike Jordan, I did have something resembling fun while flying the plane, blowing shit up. Can't say I had eight dollars worth of fun, but yeah, like dive bombing and just like <laughs> cutting up the fields, that was pretty entertaining. Now, at the end of the day, I just I want to know where all the positive reviews there are. Like two hundred plus positive reviews on the Steam page, because that just comes across as sus on this. It, it was just, that for the early access? Maybe I don't know, man. I'm just gonna say I know this is a kind of a passion project. It's something that you're working on, man. And if you're listening to this, I'm gonna say keep at it keep learning, keep improving. But yeah, to, I just can't, even, even at eight bucks, I can't tell anybody to run out and buy this one, man, because it, it just doesn't come across. It, it's just not fun there. There, there's, yeah. that's the real problem. I didn't have a good <laughs> yeah. time. I, I th and I think like that sort of simulationism in games requires a certain type of personality for it to be fun. Like th 
truck si- American truck simulator to me seems like the most asinine boring shit ever, but people ate that up. Um, and that's because they're into that specific aspect of it. And it seems like Marco Amade is into simulationist World War II LARPing effectively. Possibly. Um, I mean, I think there's a reason because I think we've all had this. We've all grew up playing first person shooters of any sort, especially on Linux. Cause that's all we had for 20 years. Uh, we've all had, I was like, wouldn't it be interesting if somebody made like a one shot, one kill, like real. And I think mm. the reason this isn't cause that doesn't translate to having a good time. Yeah. It's, it's, it's verisimilitude, right? Like you, you want, you want the essence of the thing. You don't necessarily want the thing itself. Also, yeah. I you want, want it to, know- to seem as real as possible without actually being as real as possible because yes, it, it is a video game. It is a power fantasy. And this power of fantasy gets a little bit disturbed when I'm looking at blue haystacks because the graphics glitched out again. <laughs> well, that's just because you're an evil person that uses NVIDIA. Look at that. <laughs> Look what? at that. That's a haystack. It's no. blue. <laughs> Man, be quiet. That, that's natural. It's realistic hay. It's none of that fake ha, ha, simulated Pedro, like Pedro, Instagram filter nev- hay that you see on the internet. Have you never heard of bluegrass? Have you right? never heard of bluegrass? Where do you think it comes from, Pedro? Where do you think? <laughs> it's but it's dry. It's no longer blue. <laughs> l- 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 listen, man, you, you you need to learn how to blow into a jug more. Coming Hang on. No, I, I mean I fully believe that this was done with every ounce of ability. Oh yeah. Uh, again, oh, yeah. I can absolutely see the like the effort that was put in, especially if it was a single person. There was a lot of mad hours uh thrown at this game right. and i want to make and that like clear i said it could have been fun it's really easy for but us to sit down and spend a couple of hours playing something and just like i'm not you know just going to go shit all over but you know i appreciate the work that's been done i just don't think it translates very well to uh oh 257 yeah. and, and hopefully you know what very positive recent reviews I'm calling mm-hmm. sus on that. I'm I, sorry, I, I that. hope that easy three red. Maybe. <laughs> easy four red. I don't yes, know. Maybe easy. Maybe three easy, red. easy, easy <laughs> four, 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 four red, four furious. Uh, what, what, whatever, whatever you want to call it. The, 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 you know, easy, <laughs> easy red two. world war two in space. It's just the iron dude. If you want to make the an iron space, sky video yes. game, call us, <laughs> call us, please. Absolutely. We, we will back you on that. All right. <laughs> Coming up next, we talk about virtual cams. Yeah. For your virtual scams. For the 492nd time, here it is. The hate mail. Yes. (laughs) You probably already know how this goes, but, you know, in the interest of those people who, because every episode is someone's first episode, Uh if this was yours, well... You did that to yourself. But hey, if you'd like to throw in some hate mail, just pile on like everyone else does, uh, we heavily encourage that. So just go to linuxgamecast.com. There's a contact button on the nav bar. You click on it. There's a forum that shows up. Well, there's some caveats at the top there. You might want to read them. If you don't, that's on you. And... Uh, yeah, LGC Weekly is the show that you want to pick, uh, <laughs> and then fill in your name. <laughs> it could be Kuna Haunted 4, but, um, <laughs> I thought Kuna Haunted uh, yeah, 5 was name your email too spicy subject for the show. What, 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 what did Kuna Haunted, Gunna Haunt 4? I don't know. That's, Careful, that's, you're going to open up the hell again. Stop. <laughs> Damn it, Keeper <laughs> So, uh, coming up first, man, this came out of a, I do a, uh, OBS Linux basics series, which I'm going to be getting back to because it's like, uh, as Jordan pointed out, fuck, it's almost the end of the month. And, um, this came from the one edited in virtual webcams, which was an update to one I did that was several years old from Buddha head talking about virtual cams. How can we change the camera is reported to the browser, man. That's, some, that's some, philosophizing <laughs> stuff right there, man. How, a... how is Babby form? <laughs> <laughs> Renaming it from OBS virtual camera to a generic model to avoid flags and bends. I've checked the device with us, HW, yeah, but only my physical cam is being reported. So on behalf of every single person that understood what you were asking, allow me to retort the fuck you up to, son. 
<laughs> what what are you getting banned on? So I have to. What assume. system has had so many of people use fake cameras that they've right? started to automatically ban right. them? Right. Is, is it Omegle? <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I'm more curious. <laughs> I, I dug this out of the YouTube comments, but I thought it'd be fun for conversation just to get some <laughs> theories as to like what has had a problem to what Pedro said to the point of where they have to do a check for a uh, device ID. OBS. Yeah, OBS, OBS camera. Function. Right. And and like why? What 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 <laughs> what are you up I mean, to, son? <laughs> yes, <it's>, uh, <laughs> the why is easy. It's because well, it's easy. Uh, it's there. You just click a button, and all of a sudden, you have an OBS virtual camera. Yeah. So. Right, but, but but like what 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 is so discriminating of the camera device well, what name? What are people doing to the point of somebody had to go yeah. and make that check? Is what I'm yeah. getting at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I want. <laughs> I'm going to say breaking the terms of service. <laughs> breaking the law. Breaking the law. I don't know. Speaking of hate mail, I'd like some ideas on this. Use that contact form. Because. <laughs> or, 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 what Buddha you would do. I don't know. I Buddha mean, head, provide I, some clarification, please. I, I like to, I consider myself consi- not, well, not borderline sufficiently shifty, but my shifty ass guy, I'm like, I don't know. I t- hmm. <laughs> what would a priest want? You know, um, <laughs> goodbye, children. <laughs> goodbye, children. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. I I don't know. Maybe. Well, Daisy's throwing in like working from home. Yeah. W- would Teams or anything throw a? I I I use I use the virtual cam all the time because it's easier to just share shit through OBS than manage all the crap screen from share and all that bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. I don't know. I don't know. Write us. Write us. Let us know. Also, to answer that, fuck all idea. I mean, you know what? I'm kind of glad that it does identify itself as a virtual camera, just in case. Like, Yeah, whatever this shifty guy's up to. I, yeah, I just can't think yeah. of like, that, that. That's what worries me more than anything else. Whatever you're up to, I can't even imagine it. And it's probably not good. Whatever it is, it, yeah, I'm pretty sure it goes against the terms of service of whatever service has now banned the OBS virtual camera. Yeah, is, is, is this one of these things where we're better off actually not knowing? It's just going to probably. <laughs> Plausible deniability and all that. So, uh, this, this, yeah, how do you pronounce this? Under, uh, Horizontal a, line. A blank person? Yeah, underscore, underscore, underscore. Is it, is it Morse code? I, can I Is zoom it out? No, I can't get all the way to it. Boo. <laughs> Come on. Where's the, uh, here. Morse code. Uh, what was it? Dot dash dash dash. God uh, damn it. it's dot dash. Get end frame. I'm, I'm going to force it. <laughs> um, there it is. Minus. Ah, got it. <laughs> that, that, this is the name. Not making it up. Um, it's horizontal line. It, it, hello, horizontal line. <laughs> Wrong show. Uh, apparently, horizontal line is uh, asking, "Can you guys share your mic setups? I'm looking for an upgrade, and your stuff sounds good." Well, a great deal of that comes from Ven's uh, magic. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> yeah, screenshot. Mm-hmm. Okay, now say that. Screenshots, uh, things. Um, oh God, yeah, no, Ven- it's, it's hideous. <laughs> Ven pretty much works his magic and makes us sound nice. So, yeah. <laughs> Why are you doing that? That's what he sounds like in a live stream from his house. <laughs> yes. All I did was uncheck EQ. Yep. Yeah. I have some for my for my streams, I have some magic equalizer settings that Ven set up that I he you know, I should I should look at it and I should look at that chart that you linked forever ago and actually attempt to understand that. Mm-hmm. Probably, probably. Jordan sounds the same, but like he's uh, like on the other side of the l- door. A little bit of under, yeah. It's that underwater effect that I was talking about. Yeah, that, uh, that I, yeah. Everyone sounds like they're slightly underwater because what happens? What happens is people you go out and buy shit like this. You buy shit like this. You buy big ass <laughs> broadcasting mic screws. Is like that looks big and professional. Mm. I mean, you gotta, yeah. you gotta talk into this side too. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> only if you work for YouTube, and uh, but or you know, like something like Pedro's. Uh, what's that? The Roadcaster. Yeah, Procaster. Procaster. <laughs> you got Heil or 
More importantly, you went out and you bought a mic built for kick drums called the SM7B. <laughs> All of these mics, there's nothing wrong with them, but they, the frequency response is flat, flatter than Jordan's ass. All right. That's not very flat. Called out there, baby. <laughs> I'm just saying, just you need more cushion for the pushing, one. baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't know, man. You, you, you squat 500 pounds off your back and then, then we can talk. About I'd use my sense. shoulders, not my back. That sounds bad. You should lift with your shoulders, not your back, bro. I mean, I mean, use your legs. The, 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 That'd probably even better. Yeah. 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 The, I mean, I, I wonder where you put the, the bar, you know, I, 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 can, I can, I can front squat it too. I can probably well, use it off your back. Too. And I've never tried to lift anything off my back. That sounds painful. I, I, I love barbells on my back all the time. It's called a low bar squat. Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying to mine some comedy out of this. Anyway, so extremely flat frequency response gives you that slightly underwater effect. All these mics expect to be processed. And we're not talking about like, oh, I want to sound like a fucking chipmunk type shit. It's their flat, so they can be processed. That's why you have that water effect. So you're going to be boosting high frequency, sucking out low frequency, getting it into a nice shape. I got a piece of equipment in this rack that I have yet to do a video on, and I picked it up exactly for the purpose of saying here's an easy way to do it without setting up a DAW and basic EQ and all this stuff. But yeah, to what Jordan was saying, there this is an easy chart of like learning what frequencies do what. 100% of everything that we have on all of these, including mine. See, I can pull mine. I can pull off my ACM 500, but the problem with that is you're going to get a lot more bass out of me and you're not going to get any of the high-end stuff that's going to be coming across. Like that, this will drive me fucking crazy. Like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> it sounds like you're on the radio, ninety five point five, the weasel, dude. Um, so <laughs> you, you, you want to, you want like a three band parametric EQ or shelving EQ. You can even get away with that. You don't want like a graphical EQ or anything like that. But I get a reasonably priced piece of hardware that is vintage. But the problem is, is like some people think it's vintage and it's not. In the sense of like, this was collectible. I'm like, just because it's blue doesn't mean it's collectible, people. <laughs> and uh, yeah, long story a bit longer. Doesn't matter what microphone you have. Jordan's got the AT2020. This is the podcasting standard, baby. I mean, it just works. It's a condenser mic. And that's another thing. Don't get audio advice from YouTubers. Like, you can't have a condenser mic for streaming. It's too loud. And you'll pick up all the things in the room. No. See, you need to learn about things like downward compressing, you know, or noise gates and stuff like that. I, I got a lot. Of, I got a lot of videos to make. <laughs> I did find out one thing, though. Mm. It is not Morse code. What do you mean? Uh, dot dash 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 is not a Morse thing. Well, it's uh, not a letter. hang on. Is there Morse code in other languages? Uh, I'm Whoa. looking at American continental and international. I couldn't find dot dash dash dash. So well, I, I want like an Italian version. You, 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 you want, you, you want the Morse code. That, that's what I'm saying. Man, they're like French where we just flip around the noun verb structure. I'm like, fuck it. Yeah. We just threw chairs at a game made by an Italian person, but Hey, <laughs> and you didn't say anything. So you are growing as a human being. He has extra reason to send us some hate mail next week about what kind of sons of bitches we are. Being in a next week, uh, that's when we'll see, but we got to bounce out of here for tonight. But thanks for showing up. Hopefully we answered your questions. And uh, yeah, to you, dash, underscore dashes, uh, any mic. Mysterious individual. Horizontal line. You are good to go. <laughs> All right. We got to cue some music and uh, roll some credits, but... If you want to get a hold of me, I'm just uh, at Vin Stone on Twitter. You can slide to my DMs. I'll never see them. So it's probably a good idea just to at reply me on Twitter if you want to get a hold of me there. Or uh, if you're in Discord, we got our Discord thing. I'm always answering questions. At reply me in that. And uh, Mastodon, mast.linuxteamcast.com. Or use the contact form. I mean, if you get a message that you're like, I don't want the entire internet to read this, send it through our contact form and it'll get to the correct person. Just be like, hey, Jordan. Or hey, Pedro, like, hey, Vin, or even oh, me. Hi. Yeah, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll get back with you. Cool. Mass.linuxteamcast.com, federated timeline, Mass on instance. We got one of those, thanks to Civic. And uh, I do occasionally post things there as well. Dot, dot, dash, 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 dot, dash, dot, dot, dash, dot. 
Burn at slash the burning dash fool dash on Twitter. <laughs> slash dot dash com. dash <laughs> slash dash. Man, it's yeah. been a while I, since I played a I game up. of like bit or stroke. Bit or stroke. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? It's a little bit of both. Follow me on Twitter at the burning fool. Uh, Twitch.tv slash burning fool. There. Dot beep. I don't know. I wonder just how much of that would be picked up as the uh, Fat Boy Slim song. But hey. If you'd like to discuss the peculiarities of Content ID, by all means, go and fuck yourself. But uh, if you <laughs> if you have some, you know, linux With stuff you'd like to cheap. share, hit me up on Twitter. Uh, that's at an account unaccounted for. I wasn't sure. <laughs> but yes, at unaccounted for. That, that's the way to go. I would actually listen to Lo-Fi Dungeon Chip Synth Black Metal. That sounds great. <laughs> My God, that is right up my alley. Don't even joke about that stuff, man. Fucking hipster. We gotta, th- we gotta think. <laughs> our advisors, Omegas and Artharen, our executive producers. We got, uh, we got Alias, Barbara, Scott, Michelle, Mr. Fox, Dog, Atomic, Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, Kohaku, and our Little Nick fans, Darkwing, and Abstraction. Get some sea monsters like Jack B, Renault L, Rider X, Mark, and a Truggy Verifanuta, Justin Frostclaw, and you know him, you love him, Strider. Here's the Death Notes, Nova Basil Chat, P. Romeo, Marson System T, Craig, Renee, uh, Leonardo DeCresny, Kim, Smashley G, Chris, Stephen Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2. Watch, Stephen B, the other one. All right, pick uh, if you got Dean, Bat, Gamatron, Dodger, Colin, Zathras, uh, Gag, Doug, Douglas, Douglas, Martin, Rue, Ro- Ro- Rohit, Mirror, Steve B, Michael AJ, Michael B. Michael Monica, Monica. Oh, no. Aha. <laughs> Ogi One and Menno, our newest patrons. Farzo. Pedro didn't come up with a <laughs> hidden fact for them. Oh well, next week. Next week. I mean, you kind of did. Uh, the Ogi One is like out the of this, least Mateus. popular Shut brother up. of the nope, ones. Not happening. Listen, it's, it's, it's not my job. It's 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 on your job requirements. <laughs> Look at these fuckos behind Ben's head. Buy them some shit. Get on the list. Dynify our beautiful people. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. <laughs> five dudes.